providing a practical guide to migration from TM1 to planning analytics. It will also help address the challenges and opportunities you'll meet as you plan your migration. Okay, first I want to go over just a couple of frequently asked questions. Um, one being, will I able, be able to get a copy of these slides after the event? And is today's event being recorded for future viewing? And the answer to both of those questions is yes. So you also have the, the ability to ask questions during the presentation by simply clicking the Q&A menu located on the right-hand side of your screen. Type in your question, hit enter, and we'll do our best to answer them during the webinar or get to them at the end of the session. I'd like to introduce you to today's presenters. Uh, my name is John Prosisto. I'm the Client Success Manager with Revelwood. I have with me Rob Gordy, our Vice President of Professional Services, one of the partners of Revelwood. Okay, just uh, about the agenda for this event. First, we'll go over a brief overview of Revelwood. I'll then hand it to Rob, and he'll give you a quick explanation of planning analytics. Since we realize that many of you have already seen demos, this will be a high-level description, as the focus of this webinar will be on the practical aspects of my migration and how we can help. We'll finish up with a Q&A session. Feel free to submit your, your questions, and we'll address as many as we can, or we'll make sure to get to you uh, individually after the webinar. Now, just a, a quick overview of Revelwood. As an IBM Analytics premier partner, we cover a broad spectrum of business analytics solutions, but of particular expertise in the Office of Finance, covering all things related to financial planning and reporting. In our 20-year history, we've helped hundreds of Fortune 100 and mid-sized clients incorporate analytics into their everyday thinking. Our ability to speak business first helps us understand your biggest challenges so we can build solutions that help you gain a competitive advantage and drive improved outcomes. With that, I will toss it over to Rob. Um, Rob, all yours. Thank you, John. Uh, and welcome, everybody, to, our, to today's webinar. Uh, so I'm going to start off uh, describing planning analytics. But as John said, the assumption here is that all of you have either seen a demo or presentation from either IBM or Revelwood. Uh, that helps you understand what planning analytics is. Uh, if you want to see one of the Revelwood webinars, uh, those recordings are available by going uh, to our website. So there, with planning analytics is a rebranding of the TM1 product line. Uh, the most important aspect of it is that, number one, it has everything that the current 10.2, 10.22, the current TM1 has. It also has a couple of new features. Uh, the three big ones are the ones that we've listed here. Two of them are new user interfaces. And the last one, the other one, uh, is more of a back-end feature. So the, the two new uh, interfaces one of them is called Planning Analytics Workspace. It's a web-based interface, and its primary purpose is uh, for dashboarding, but it's also interactive. It also allows for data entry. Um, in fact, it integrates with TM1 Web, so all of the TM1 Web sheets and the power of TM1 Web that you're used to, it's all included in Planning Analytics Workspace. You may hear me refer to that from here on as PAW. The other new interface is PAX. PAX is Planning Analytics for Excel. It is, eventually, it will replace Perspectives, the tool that uh, we've all come to know and love over the last 20 years or so. The good news is everything you've done in Perspectives will migrate fairly easily right into PAX. So all the DBRW formulas, et cetera, they will migrate. And we're going to be talking about that and even demoing that uh, later on. Finally, there's hierarchies. Uh, hierarchies is a new feature that allows for, in essence, much better analysis uh, of your data. It allows you to analyze your data based on attributes as if those attributes were dimensions. 
Uh, sometimes this feature is called virtual dimensions. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk again, we will talk about that as well later on. Okay, moving on. As you consider how to, excuse me, having a bit of a problem, would you mind progressing the slide for me? Thank you. So as, as you consider your migration from GM1 10.2.2 into the world of planning analytics, it is important for you to consider whether you want to stay, assuming you're already on-prem, whether you want to stay on-prem or whether you want to move to the cloud. And honestly, this decision, there, there are a lot of variables in that decision, and it will uh, be driven by, by your own environment. It will be on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay? One very important thing to note is that the software that is running on the cloud and the software that you would be installing on-prem are identical. So there is no difference in terms of the features that you would see and how it would work. It's just a matter of whether you want to have IBM uh, maintain your, your system or if you want to do it yourself. Okay. So moving on. Okay. Uh, so in terms of the path, uh, to in this migration. So you're starting off, uh, I'm assuming you're starting off with an implementation of either 10.2 or 10.22. As you probably know, IBM is, uh, has an end of life for, for these versions in September of 2019. So, uh, you know, it's almost, it's what, 10 months away, but those 10 months go sooner than you think. So it's good that you are seriously considering how you're going to migrate uh, today. So as you can see from the various arrows that we've drawn on this, on this diagram, there are many paths you can take. You can go from your on-prem 10.2.2 and go to on-prem planning analytics. You can also go to the cloud. Uh, we also even have clients that have gone from TM1 cloud and ended up with planning analytics local. Uh, so we've done just about every, uh, uh, you know, permutation here. So, uh, so the, the, the one key thing to know is that the migration from a data perspective is all very seamless. Okay? The, the, your current database structures, cubes, dimensions, attributes, they migrate completely to the new environment without any work or any um, any modifications. Okay. So what are the benefits and, and what will help you decide which way to go? Well, it comes down to, again, it's going to be on a case-by-case -case, uh, uh, basis. Uh, the, the, some of the um, things you may have heard from IBM, as well as other cloud vendors, whether you're talking to cloud vendors about your ERP system or your phone system or just about anything else, uh, there are arguments about total cost of ownership. Uh, and I do believe that, that the, those arguments, you know, are valid in many cases and maybe not so valid in other cases. Uh, it really will depend on what on how your IT infrastructure and the, your IT personnel, how that's all structured, uh, whether they have the bandwidth to help you maintain uh, your, your planning analytics uh, infrastructure and application. Uh, now, there is one key consideration in that planning analytics is being updated monthly. So every month, the cloud instance has a new update, and this isn't just bug fixes. It could have major features in there. Uh, it, the, those same updates are then rolled out to the on-prem customers, or made available, I should say, to the on-prem customers within a month of them being available on the cloud. And, and because they are coming out at such a fast pace, I have been recommending to a lot of clients that they, that they at least, even if they decide to go on-prem, 
that every quarter, or at the very least, every semester, they consider doing an upgrade of their on-prem installation. Because you are going to have many features and many new uh, new capabilities provided to you by the by these upgrades, as well as bug fixes. So uh, you know you should consider that as you're deciding whether you're going cloud or on-prem. Okay. Now, the, the, on the the on the hurdles when you go to on cloud, there is a, a, a small hurdle of of being able to integrate with your on-prem databases. So if you have on-prem planning analytics, it's as simple as an ODBC connection. If you're doing it on the cloud, you it can be seamless as if it was an ODBC connection, but there's a bit of setup work that has to happen there. So you just have to consider that as uh, when you're making this decision. Uh, the other item, and we're going to talk about this in, in just a minute, when you're thinking about your migration path, when you're migrating on-prem, you can take your path a bit more incrementally. When you go to the cloud, you have to, you have to move from perspectives to planning analytics for Excel uh, or TM1 Web. That perspectives does not work well with Planning analytics on the cloud, and I'm guessing that that is not that should not come as a surprise to most of you. That plan, uh, right now, if you try to use perspectives with a, uh, a you know with your locally installed TM1, unless your unless your computer is local to that server, you are not going to. Uh, have good performance when you're using perspectives. Uh, I don't know about the rest of you, but my screen, I just lost my presentation. So I'm going to keep talking, I believe, as if that presentation is up there. Sure, I'll load it up again. And uh, let, let me, for one minute, I, I don't have it at all. Look at my screen. Okay. At least I can load it up. Uh, so, it, I feel like this would not be a webinar if something like this did not happen. So, figure, figure it, um, this is kind of common. Uh, but I do want to start talking about, oh, I think it just started again. So, we're going to move to the next slide, which is on, uh, discussing Revelwood best practices for migration. So. The migration that is, again, it's going to be customized in each case. And, but the Revelwood, the best practice that Revelwood recommends is a three-phased approach. The first phase is to simply install the planning analytics software, the server and perspectives and TM1 web. And in essence, you're going to move exactly what you have today into that environment, okay? By doing that, of course, you're going to be moving off of 10.2.2, which means you will have support for your, for your, your implementation beyond next year. So that's important. You're all, you'll also have some benefit in terms of performance, uh, but you're not going to see the big benefit until you get into phases two and three. So. Phase two is about moving to PAX. So in essence, taking your perspective reports and modifying them as needed, uh, hopefully minimal modifications, and start using them in PAX and training your users to, to use the new PAX interface. And then finally, after you're done with that, that's when we recommend really digging into the new features, features like PAW and and hierarchies. Okay, so let's dig into each one of these phases. Now, I do want to stress that we do have clients where they combine these phases or even break them up a bit further, but most of them, a lot of them, will combine the phases. For example, if you're moving to the cloud, you're going to, in essence, combine phases one and two. 
you know, phase one is a lot, a big part of it is about um, installation. With, if you're going to the cloud, it becomes a phase dedicated to, to understanding your new cloud environment and moving your, your data structures up into the cloud and your reports, et cetera. But you're going to need to combine that with phase two, which is the, the PACs, the introducing PACs. Uh, but that's only if you're moving to the cloud. If you're going local, and a lot of our clients are, you get to take it in a more incremental way. So what's included in the basic upgrade? Well, it starts off with that. It would be installation that we were talking about. And it's not just installing TM1 server and perspectives and TM1 web but it also includes installing the PAW server. The PAW server is what is needed for PACS and the PAW client to work. Uh, and we, and uh, we strongly recommend that you do that in phase one so that you're able to pilot and test those new uh, features in your own environment, okay? Uh, so in this phase, our best practices are number one, keep the, the uh, changes to a minimum, okay? The whole idea of this phase is, we, we call it lifting shift. It's just to get you into that new environment, okay? Uh, another uh, best practice that we've come to realize over the last year as we've been doing these implementations, we recommend creating a separate server, separate, usually it's a VM, you know, virtual machine, to handle the web server and the PAW server. And the reason we recommend that, uh, it, it, there are actually many reasons. One is for scalability, so that you're able to do things like load balancing. Another is for uh, performance improvements, where you have one server handling that interaction with the client, and the other server doing the calculations, the, the, you know, doing what the, what the TM1 server uh, does. And then finally, uh, if you are a client that uh, has limited PVUs, uh, then you, those PVUs are only counted on the TM1, on the database server. They do not, it, you don't have to worry about the CPU and the power that you're putting behind the PAW server and the TM1 web server. So by separating them, you can, you can basically get the most out of your licenses. Okay, uh, the, the other uh, best practice that I really want to um, emphasize is this idea of planning for your next phases. Definitely take the time now during this phase to think about and to, to think about and, and, and really plan out what the planning analytics for Excel migration is going to look like or how you might want to use hierarchies or how you might want to roll out PAW. Um, to your user base. Okay, uh, one, one other item, uh, and again, this came from, from uh, hard learning, let's say. Uh, the TM1 web uh, implementation, when, when you uh, use single sign-on with TM1 web, and you're using the single sign-on that's built into TM1, uh, that sign-on is difficult to set up in TM1 web. It works when, when it is all set up, but it does take considerable effort to, to get that working. Uh, so it, um, it's just something to keep in mind. Also, you know, it, you may want to consider using Cognos Access uh, Manager instead of having, instead of using Active Directory uh, single sign-on integration that's built into TM1. Okay, let's move to that second phase, which is introducing planning analytics for Excel. So what do we do during this phase? Well, we, we hopefully by now have reviewed and planned out which reports are going to be migrated. Um, so at this point, we do recommend that that our clients take a look at their standard reports. And when I say standard, I mean centrally managed. Uh, you know, and those reports, see if they're being used. And if they are, then put them on a list and that's 
part of this this step, you're going to uh, modify them if need be, and more importantly, test and ensure that they work properly in PACS. Uh, if you are a Revelwood client that uses Dynamo, uh, Dynamo is Revelwood's reporting tool. Uh, that tool does not work with PACS. Uh, we are investigating uh, alternatives and, and, and being able to, um, to have a similar tool in PACS, but what's important here is that much of the functionality that's provided by Dynamo is also provided by active forms. So, there, so if you are one of those clients, there would be an effort to convert your Dynamo reports into active form reports. Revolut has created a tool to help with that called the Dynamo Documenting Tool or Documenter, um, and that will tell you, uh, it, it'll help you analyze uh, the, the reports you have, where you're using Dynamo, and how you're using Dynamo, and even provide some suggestions on how to uh, create an active form that will do the same thing. Um, another item is that if you use VBA code in your worksheets, especially code that makes calls to TM1, so for example, TM1 refresh, which, which does a, or recalc, which does a recalc of the, of the workbook, those uh, calls, they, there, there is a new VBA library for PACs, so the conversion of your old VBA to the new is actually pretty straightforward, but it is a step that, that you need to take. And finally, there's converting the action buttons. So if you have action buttons in your current uh, workbooks and TM1 web sheets, the, uh, planning on analytics will convert those automatically, but, but you have to do it as one of the steps. So basically you can open up the workbook and say convert all the buttons and it'll convert the buttons to, for you. So it, they still have action buttons, but they're implemented in a different way uh, in planning analytics for Excel. Okay, uh, the last uh, item that I want to stress is that when you're doing this step, you really want to create a very good test plan, okay? You want to know the reports that you need to test and ensure that, that they're working uh, as expected before you roll them out. Okay. And of course, Re Revelwood uh, has, uh, you know, can help uh, to a large extent creating that test plan. So what I'd like to do now is actually switch over and do a very brief demo. Uh, so a lot of our clients were concerned at this step, at the PACT step, worrying that, 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 uh, that their current reports will, won't work. And I want to uh, relieve some of those fears. So let's, let me click here. There. Okay. Hopefully everybody's going to be seeing a nice sunset, which is now being replaced by uh, a screen that should be showing uh, perspectives. So again, this is the tool that we all know and love so well. Uh, so I am right now looking at a planning sample, which came with, with that comes with TM1, and I'm going to open up one of the views, call input. So here's my view, right? Uh, just has a handful of counts on the side, time across the top, and a handful of selectors. I'm going to create an active form from this. Okay, so uh, hopefully that's that's familiar to a lot of you. Uh, the advantages of, act, of active forms versus just taking a slice are that you're able to, for example, double click on items and be able to drill down. Uh, it also, as you as you may have noticed, it handles formatting uh, much better than than um, than just creating a slice. So all this color coordination here, uh, and that formatting, again, most of uh, most uh, most users or most uh, admins have seen this before. Uh, but I'm going to make a change to the format. So for example. 
this blue area, I'm going to highlight it up here in the format area, and I'm going to make it bold. Okay. So now, if I come back to TM1, back to form, and I rebuild this current sheet, you'll notice now those lines are, are in bold. Correct? Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hide this area, and I'm going to save this document. So actually, the way I'll save it is by closing it. Say yes. Here. Oh. Excuse me. Okay, good. All right. So this is the Paul webinar. Uh, not Paul. Fax. Fax webinar demo. Okay. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my that, – that, by the way, I was just doing that on a server on the internet somewhere in, in Amazon's uh, server farm. So right now I've switched over and I'm using PAX installed locally on my computer. So this will give you a feel for the fact that it works a lot better uh, than Perspectives does when talking to a server that is not nearby. Okay. So uh, this is PAX. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, um, the, it, it, when you log into a server on the right-hand side, you, you uh, are able to see more or less what you normally see in Server Explorer, you're able to um, go into the various cubes, look at views, uh, and um, the, the, one of the nice big differences, PAX allows you to do your cube browsing right within Excel. I'm not going to show that. As I said, I'm making an assumption you've seen other demos. Right now, all I want to do is I want to open up that document that, that we were um, that we just looked at a few minutes ago uh, on the other server. Hold on one minute. Uh, here we go. Folders. I'm going to go to my work folder. And I'm going to open up that document. OK. This is, why, why does that happen to me? So, OK, it's working fine. Not, I think maybe I had a different version of Excel on that server. In any case, as you can see, it opens up fine. These are the DBRW formulas. So DBRWs work perfectly well in this environment, as, do all, as does all the functionality that I was showing you with respect to PACs. Okay? Big difference between this and, and uh, what you're seeing up, in the, uh, up on the other server, on the other, in the other window, was, is that this is all happening locally on my computer in the in the new PAX environment. But other than that, everything works the same. So I hope that leaves some concerns uh, that some of you might have had uh, with respect to uh, doing that migration. So I'm going to stop sharing this and go back to the presentation. OK. All right, let's move on then. Okay, that was the demo. All right, let's get into phase three. Phase three is all about the new features. So in particular, there are two that I would highlight, and that is uh, PAW. So, so making use of PAW and the dashboards and that entire new environment, and making use of hierarchies. Okay? Now, in terms of uh, best practices, on the hierarchies, if you have a reporting cube, so for example, if you have a revenue cube that has your, your sales by product and you, and you already have a, a second cube that is basically the same data, but not only broken down by product, but broken down by product style or color or 
any of the attributes of product, you don't need to have that second cube anymore. And I can tell you Revolut has implemented a lot of these over the years. It's really nice to be able to get rid of that and be able to just have your source data cube, but to be able to have the capability to slice and dice your data based on those attributes. Uh, so that's one best practice is to look at those reporting cubes to see if you can replace them. Second is to look at other cubes that maybe you, over the years it would have been nice to have a reporting cube, but you never created it. Um, third, you, you're going to want to use TI to do the maintenance of these hierarchies. So there are new function calls within Turbo Integrator that let you do that maintenance. And that's, um, you know, and that's really the way to, to go about it. You can also manually maintain them, but when you can automate anything, that's, that's the way to go. Uh, now, as for pause, our recommendation is to create pilot instances where you start with a, some user group and have them start using PAW. And for, typically, the admins or the developers will create the first dashboards, but then to have the users be trained to manipulate those dashboards and create their own. And you will learn a lot about your user's uh, appetite for, for, for the product uh, through that process. OK, uh, let's keep moving here. The next thing I want to briefly talk about is a bit technical. So uh, for those of you who are more finance, uh, you know, are on the finance side of the house, uh, I promise this will be quick, but I did want to address what, how, how, how TM1 works behind the scenes and how planning analytics works. Uh, so this is what TM1 um, 10.x uh, looks like, right? You have two um, interfaces, uh, architect and perspectives. They talk directly to the TM1, web, uh, TM1 server. The, you also have a browser option which talks to the TM1 web server. And the authentication is done either by talking directly to Active Directory or uh, using Cognos Access Manager. So what does it look like in the new world? So remember, when I started off, I said that uh, Planning Analytics has everything that the current TM1 has. And I hope this diagram uh, emphasizes that. So. Uh, as you can see, all of the current pieces are still there, and what we've added is the two new interfaces, PAX and Planning Analytics Workspace, and they talk to a new server component, which is the uh, Workspace server. Okay. Um, so one important thing to note is that this uh, server, although it's called the PAW server, it is required for PAX to work, because PAX communicates through that. Uh, other than that, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay away from the technical side of things. There are probably loads of questions people have with respect to Docker and, and uh, the implementation of Planning Analytics, so the, the server. But uh, that, I guess, will be uh, content for another webinar. So let's just go into some overall considerations. Uh, on the technical side, one thing you sh need to consider is on the PAW server, uh, you can install it either in Linux or using uh, Windows 2016. Either one works. We have many clients using both, you know, both of those uh, implementations. Uh, it really depends on whether your IT staff is familiar with Linux and comfortable having a Linux server. Uh, now, another uh, item is, are, is authentication. I mentioned before, uh, you know, you really you have three options here. One is native TM1 authentication. Let's face it, it's not good, okay? It never has been. Uh, it, it's, it's not the most secure way to, uh, to authenticate into TM1. Uh, the n the, another option is using Active Directory and, um, and LDAP uh, in connection with 
the, the basic planning analytics or TM1 server. Uh, that is a, a great solution, except for that caveat I mentioned earlier regarding uh, TM1 web. Uh, and again, that's just an installation issue. Once that installation uh, in configuration is done, it does work very well with TM1 web. And finally, there's the option of CAM, Cognos Access Manager. And if you haven't used it before, it, you, know, you should consider it because it will work the same way across all the environments, including TM1 web. Uh, but it does require uh, for it does require maintenance to be done, you know, a user and group maintenance to be done in a product outside of TM1. Uh, the other item I wanted to emphasize here is planning analytics administration and planning analytics modeling. Uh, those two products are new and are really rolling out now over the last couple of months, and they are the beginnings of the replacement of the development environment. Right now, the development environment is in perspectives. That's where you do your rule editing, TI, turbo integrator editing, um, you know, all of your development, as well as your administration, adding users and, and, uh, and managing the server. That's all uh, going to be moved into these new planning analytics uh, administration and modeling interfaces. And uh, as I said, they're just coming out now. Okay, uh, let's have just one more slide, and that is uh, for these last considerations. And these are not technical in nature, they're more business oriented. So first of all, during phase one, you really should be taking a look. I know I said do minimal changes, but I do recommend getting rid, do a system cleanup, get rid of old TM1 objects that you're not using, cubes or dimensions that, that maybe over the years, you know, you stopped using. Uh, and, and also even views and subsets. It's just, it, it's a good time to, to do that cleanup and to, and to review your system. Uh, the other type of cleanup you should be considering, and this is uh, in phase two, which is the report cleanup. I know clients that literally have hundreds and hundreds maybe even upwards of thousands of, of reports out there. Uh, and, and, you know, most of them are with, with one client. They literally have 500 reports that are supported by the, the core staff that support the product. Uh, so that does not include all of the reports that were generated by people on their own when they took slices out of, out of uh, TM1. So, all of those reports, you know, you really should assess whether you need all of them and, and get rid of the ones you don't need. Uh, I also uh, recommend to use this opportunity uh, to take a step back and look at your, your planning process and consider over the years as your company has changed, have, has your implementation within TM1 changed along with it, or are you doing things in an inefficient way, or even in a way that, you know, years ago you said, look, let's just do it this way for now, and we'll, we'll fix it later, and later never came. Well, this is the opportunity for you to take a pause and, and consider that. Okay, so. With that said, I believe I can turn this back to John for the, the last couple of slides in this presentation. Okay, thanks, Rob. So how can we help you as you plan your migration to planning analytics? Um, Rubblewood utilizes a three-step approach to make sure you're getting the most of your planning analytics environment. Uh, the first, you see the impact, uh, impact call, really. Um, we offer a free 30-minute impact call to help assess your specific situation and answer questions that you may have around the migration, again, specific to your environment. Second, after the impact call, we'll work with you to create a detailed review and assessment of your current TM1 environment. Uh, we'll discuss your migration strategy, how to leverage the benefits of the new features, 
and then develop a roadmap for your migration. And then third, we'll partner with you as you go through the migration and assist, uh, assist you in areas such as Rob was talking about report testing and conversions and packs, building out PAW dashboards, uh, and utilizing hierarchies to make your models faster and more flexible. So we'll be with you side by side to, to, to help that along. We'll be with you, we'll be there every step of the way to make sure your migration is successful and that it goes smoothly. And you get to take advantage of all the new, the new features. Um, with that, if we've, we've got a, uh, some time built in for question and answers, uh, if anybody has some Q&A, feel free to uh, log them right into the Q&A pod and we'll see if we can get to them uh, at this point. I don't see any popping up, but hopefully, okay. So did I, I guess I covered things so well. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I guess I'm glad that there are no questions. Uh, the, uh, oh, actually I do have uh, somebody coming through the question regarding the, the VB library for planning analytics uh, for Excel. Uh, so yes, there is a, a library that uh, it, it's actually somewhat similar to the current library. You're able to uh, use that to to do a refresh, to to um, uh, you know to call processes, to you know um, uh, even you know send data and retrieve data. Uh, the I I we can we will share with. Um, with anybody who wants, we'll share with you the links into the IBM documentation for that library. Okay, thanks, Rob. Yep. All right, we'll give it a minute. I hope it looks like that we've uh, covered a good portion of that. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, obviously, if there's other questions, we can we can certainly hand them on a a, a, a one-off basis as well. So we're, we're going to give you back a few minutes uh, of your afternoon, and I, I appreciate it, uh, and thank you, everyone, for attending. We hope that you found this informative, um, and we look forward to working with you as you're planning your migration to planning analytics. And, and I, I know Rob mentioned this earlier, and I know it sounds like there's a lot of time between now and the end of support next September, but we all know budget season, getting started, the holidays, year-end, before you know it, you're rolling into Q2 there really isn't that much open time. So this is the perfect time to start scheduling this project. Actually, I, let me just add to that. Uh, typically, uh, our uh, upgrades, if you do the basic upgrade, that can be, you know, as few as, you know, a couple of weeks, one to two weeks of, of work, but the testing takes a little while. So the, even the most basic upgrade will take about a month or so. The typically we're seeing, you know, especially if you're going to introduce packs, you're talking about a multi-month affair to, uh, you know, to bring you really into the world of, of planning analytics. Okay, thanks, Rob. Uh, and, and also, if you have any questions, other questions that you'd like additional information, please feel free to reach.